Yeah. 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 So many lies that you hear from the net, they don't get her respect. She report in the truth, not a check. You want an unbiased opinion straight from the chest. Not a bit of conflict or someone here for a check. Tune in, these are thoughts from a lawyer on a mission who goes so hard. It's like she works on commission. Trolls in the comments might say she tripping because they lack the knowledge. They don't know they missing. Got a couple current events that you like. Want to know about law from the eyes. Tired of all these blogs running lies Because they agendas are disguised Tune in to the intellect Cause I'm sure y'all missing All the facts of the case That she steady is gifted Someone here for the people Man, it's so uplifting If you ain't subscribed yet Then you just omitting facts everyone welcome welcome my name is pam esquire also known as your law intellect also known as the social media lawyer as some people call me and you guys are the intellects thank you so much for being here being in the chat i know that you guys are going to have a lot to say for the last few videos we have been covering um ernest ernesto nesto williams jr who is the husband of shirley strawberry we've listened to jail tapes we've been we went over documents long before the jail tapes came out and uh, we've been uh analyzing and discussing uh, his legal cases and the legal woes and the recent um strawberry letter from shirley strawberry herself so we are going to continue to talk about Ernest Williams today, as I told you guys in the last video. Be sure to please hit the like button. Subscribe if you have not done so already. Thank you so much. We reached 10,000. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, we're still climbing. We're actually still climbing from the 10K, so it's nothing but up from here. Thank you so much for everyone's support. Um, I've only been doing this thing for a little bit over a year, but it's been a blast. It's one of the best decisions that, that I made. I had a few of my colleagues that was like, girl, you should start a YouTube channel. And so I did it. And this is the result. So I thank you guys so much for all of your continuous support, all of the donations, the cash apps, the super chats, all of that good stuff. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Just know that I do. It's already 300 in here. We only been on for three minutes. That's what I'm talking about. So you guys make sure you hit the like so that we can hit this algorithm and make sure that other people find out about the, um, about the channel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Belinda. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you again. I couldn't do it without you guys been here to watch me grow, figure out what the channel was going to, how it's going to move, how we were going to, integrate the legal aspects of it so that the my, my purpose was to integrate it so that everyone will be well learned in the law beyond law and order beyond some of these great shows like suits where it's not really real life so that was my purpose and you guys have helped me fulfill my purpose some of you guys get me together in that chat a lot some of you guys have been blocked because of it but you know it's all good we're all one family I appreciate the conversation. I appreciate the commentary in the chat. I appreciate when you guys come on the platform. So without further ado, because I know I'm going to hear somebody in the chat. You didn't have to do that long intro. Your intro already long. Listen, my son did the video. For those that don't know, that is my oldest son who is rapping. And I am going to play that video every time I open it, okay? <laughs> but I love y'all. But I love y'all. So anyways. What I want to do today is um, I'm going to pack, I'm going to start out by playing one of the jail calls from Ernest Williams. OK, um, I, it was a 30 minute jail call and I cut it down to 10 minutes. A small piece of it was heard on phone calls from prison. Shout out to them. If you guys haven't checked out their channel, go ahead and check that out. Subscribe, give them a like, all that good stuff. Um, but this is most of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about is pertaining to the legal aspects in his cases. And as we navigate through his cases, um, he's an interesting cat. 
Uh, I've been able to kind of go back in time, which took a lot of re. <laughs> it takes a lot of research because on one of the calls, there was an interesting mention of his name being spelled wrong. So his name has been spelled in a few ways. So you'll see E-R and you'll see E-A-R. Now, the earlier times was E-R. I don't know what his mother put on his birth certificate, but some, on some instances, the letters get rearranged. Sometimes certain numbers get rearranged. But what has been consistent and how I've been able to verify some of the information to make sure that it was him. And this, this is a lesson, too, for anybody that's blogging as well. Ernest Williams is a very common name. And spelling it E-R, you'll probably get three, four hundred hits when you put the name up. So be careful on um, when you report, of course, to try to cross-reference and verify. So that's what has taken me a lot of time when it came to finding some of the past documents because there's different spellings of names. Um, and I want to cross-verify to make sure that this is potentially him. I still say, you know, it may or might, may not be, but I cross-reference it. So how we knew the first case, for those of you that don't understand, the ones that, or those that you don't know, I should say, um, is that I actually was on the hearing. So what I did at the hearing was I wrote down the case numbers. So once I wrote down the case numbers, I went and I looked them up. So that's how I knew who he was, made sure that was his birthday. Plus, we also know his birthday. Why? Because he and Shirley got married on his birthday. Remember, he turned 50. It was January 9th of 2015 when they got married. So we all know like when his birthday is. But your girl had to do some extra working just to make sure that we have the right cat. Because when I tell you the way them E's and them A's and them R's, I switched around and moved around, you know, you know how that goes. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Yes. So, yeah, there, there's definitely, thank you so much for listening. And I know for some people, um, to me, if you can't teach a third grader what you know, then you don't know it. So that's kind of what I come into. So I know when I'm in court, trust me depending on what judge I'm in front of. There are different vocabulary that I may use for them, but that's not my intent. My intent is really to make sure that you understand. Hopefully you or your loved ones are not in certain situations, but some of the things that I tell you or put you hip on, maybe you can um, go check it out for yourself because everybody can't afford to just go get a lawyer. Everybody can't afford to go pay for a consultation. Everybody can't afford. So maybe you could say, oh, she said I could look this up. Oh, she said I could find this up, you know, over here. So that's my purpose. But anyway, I've jabbed long enough. It's been eight minutes. So I, this video right here before I play it, well, it's it's actually the audio from the jail. It's Ernesto and um, Shirley. And it's very interesting. And I want you guys to pay attention to it. But I cut, like I said, I cut some of the pieces out because she was talking about like other of her friends or maybe former friends. And it was a lot of name dropping and conversation, just like how she said in her Steve Harvey apology video, how she was just, you know, running her mouth. There was a lot of running her mouth on, on this video and it was about various people. So I'm not trying to fracture relationships. That's not what my intent is. I really am, um, especially your friendships, because she probably definitely needs those at this point. But um, so that that's just so you guys can get the context of why there are some, you know, some chopped up a, a tad bit in this video. Again, it was 30 minutes. I got it down to 10 minutes um, just for purposes of the documents we're going to go over today. Um, there is a part towards the end of this video um, of which. There's a mention because she was on vacation. I mean, she wasn't on vacation, but she went out of town. So he'll start talking about, I'm glad you got relaxation and all of that. That's what he's refer they're referring to because the way it's cut up. When I listened to it back, I wanted to make sure you guys understood the context without me having to stop it and explain. So let me fill up this video. Hold up. 
You guys, as you guys come in, please make sure that you hit that good like button. I appreciate it. Saying my device is having trouble sharing a video. Let me try it again. Hold on. right there just because as you hear she said that we've been married eight years and he's been arrested three times those were out of her what was came out of her mouth i don't know why this video is distorting but i want to share one of the cases of which she was talking about it was actually two cases And this was five months after they were married. Yes, someone said five months. Oh, yes. June 19th of 2015, a true bill, which is an indictment, came down in Fulton County. And according to this, it says, in the name on behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and cause Ernest L. Williams with the offense of theft by deception for the said accused in the county of Fulton in the state of Georgia on the 18th day of October 2013. Accused did create the impression the accused would provide the victim a RV, which was to serve as a mobile barbershop in exchange for $10,000 U.S. currency. The accused received the cash and has failed to provide the vehicle despite numerous attempts by the victim to have the accused provide the vehicle in question or return the funds given to the accused. This was what the indictment was. If you guys recall, Shirley and Ernesto were married on January 9th of 2015. This indictment came down 
June of 2000, June 19th of 2015. So yes, approximately five months. Now, again, I don't know. It, it was two different indictments, but they were on the same day. So maybe there's another time because these two look like they happened together that he would have got arrested together. I'm going to read the second one. I don't know if there was a sec if there was one after that because she mentioned three arrests since they have been married in eight years. So let me um get back to it. So this is the second one, which again, June 19, 2015. In the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge the accused, Ernest L. Williams. If you guys see, the name is spelled E-R-N-E-S-T. There is not an A. For the said accused in the county of Fulton and state of Georgia on the 27th day of November, 2013, accused did create the impression upon the victim's name the alleged victim, that the accused was the rightful possessor of an 89 Prevost bus, which the accused sold to Melvin Stokes, promising to provide the title to said vehicle. At the time of purchase, the vehicle had a valid lien placed upon it, and the lien holder took possession of the Prevost bus, thereby, thereby depriving the victim of said property in U.S. currency. So what he was accused of was selling someone a car that had a lien on it. So it's like, I have a car note with Chrysler, but I tell you, hey, you can take this car, just give me 5000 but I don't really own it. That's what the allegations were. So the reason why, because I know this was mentioned, this was mentioned on like Chronicle Speaks, if you guys um, watch her channel, it's pretty dope, about, you know, the arrest that, that happened around when they first got married. But one of the reasons why I came to the conclusion that perhaps she believed them, I see a lot of people in the chat like, well, you knew, like that was five months later. As I look further down into the docket, I noticed that what these, these cases ended favorable to him, meaning they ended in what we call a no lay pros. A no lay pros is basically when the prosecutor chooses to drop the charges. Now, the circumstances behind that, I don't know what it is. So sometimes this there was probable cause, according to the grand jury, because this went before a grand jury and they said it was probable cause. I've had no lay process when it was in that probable cause state. We had the hearing and the prosecutor was like, hey, Pam, we really ain't got nothing now that we're looking at it. And they, they choose to dismiss it without prejudice and we move on with our lives. Well, with this, I can't tell from the docket why they dismissed both of those cases, but they it was dismissed. And it could have been because the prosecutor felt like they didn't want to further prosecute. It could have been because they offered him what we call diversion programs, which are those programs where, for instance, you give me community service. And then if I do whatever within three months or I pay the money back. I've had someone that I represented where as long as they paid the money back within a certain amount of time, then they dismissed the case. It could be several reasons why it was no lay price. So I didn't want to just leave it standing that he was charged in 2015, five months later. But that is true. There were two cases. And she mentioned in this phone call about three different arrests. Again, these two cases were on the same day. So maybe it was another arrest. Sometimes after five months after their, um, you know, af after their marriage, but maybe because of how this ended, she felt like, you know, people are out here lying on them or something. Maybe that's why she got the impression that she got that people are out here telling stories. Because, you know, I'm trying to trying to find I'm reaching for it, Shirley. I'm really reaching for it. But. We've never really covered a case over here that was no late price. So that's why I thought it was very interesting that that actually occurred and that these two cases ended up being dismissed. But, let, but as you see from the um, as you see from the audio, Shirley sound like she she about over it. Like she was like, we got to get this stuff together. Let me see if this plays a little bit better because it was distorted. 
And it was getting on my dog on there. So. See if I can continue. Like, no. It's this still is the whole lot. Okay. Yeah, this is the whole lot. So let's get whatever you have to get. Take lunch. Take care of it. Write this stuff down and take care of it. I don't know why it is doing this. This is a trick of the no, enemy. Okay. 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 Wait a minute. We got together. You asked me about my credit. I didn't know about my credit. But, yeah, get your stuff together. Get your get your record expunged. Get your finances. Let me go back more. a little bit. Yeah. She said she thought everything was in order, but apparently it was not. I don't know why this is distorting like this, so I apologize. I'm assuming it's my speakers because it definitely isn't the cause. You know, there's too racism, too much racism out here. Yeah. He's a black man. He could lose. No, I don't think I'm, I'm in the same thing right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know, you have to move differently, you know, just a lot. You're a black man, you know, you gotta, I mean, I, I thought everything was in order, but, you know, it apparently it wasn't. And, you know, they're too racist and too much racism out here. You know? yeah, I think, He's a black man, he could lose. <laughs> no, I don't he think, could, I'm, I'm in the same predicament right now. Yeah, yeah, it's like, you know, so what she was talking about was he mentioned Kanye West around this time when he was going through all the stuff he was going through. And um, and I think it was when he made the anti-Semitic remarks. And so they were discussing that. He's the one that brought it up. So he's kind of comparing like, yeah, Kanye is going to go. It's going to affect him worse because he's a black man is what she's saying. And he's comparing it and throwing himself in there like it affect them too or something. <laughs> you have to move differently. You know, they don't treat, it's not fair out here for a black man, especially life isn't fair anyway, but it's especially, you know, you can't do what they do in your family. You know, sometimes still move. You know, you have to make sure all your stuff is in order. Anyway, we'll get them. Huh? I'm sorry, yeah. So she's trying to tell him because he's a black man. So <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> I heard, yeah, we gonna get into that. Um, you said, is it just me? Shelly is giving Wendy Williams vibes. She keeps repeating herself and saying this isn't fair. And why did she not raise her even before meeting this man? I don't know, but I mean, she got married at 60, so I assume her daughter was um, an adult. 
Um, I had a few people that told me about her daughter and allegedly her mom was the one that, that that's what they said. I don't know. I haven't talked to Sheridan or, or, Straub or Shirley, but yeah, I've heard that a few times related to her daughter, but I'm not, I have, I'm without sufficient information to give you on that. But thank you so much for the super chat and the question. Thank you so much. Hey, Miss Parker as well. Y'all is into this wife stuff. <laughs> I work hard trying to make this stuff make sense. Okay, so you guys keep talking about this wife situation. Because clearly this is acting up. I'm going to probably drop the entire call. It's like 33 minutes in my membership for those that care. But those were really the more, those were the parts for purposes of what we're doing now, just to go over, um, you know, one of the cases that she did mention in this audio. So if you guys seen, I have 50 of you guys send me Chronicle Speaks, um, her, um, not her last one, maybe yesterday or two days ago. I can't remember. She did a video on Ernest and she said that she received some information. She doesn't know how true it is. She put her disclaimer out there. She couldn't really, you know, whether prove, prove it, confirm, deny, and that he may have still been married to his first wife. And I've actually had some conversation as well with Chronicle Speaks. Shout out to her. But I don't have any information on a first wife, but I do have, because they're talking about a wife from some years before. But I did find some information on another wife. So, allegedly. So, for those of you that don't know, there's a slew of cases. And again, I had to cross-reference and cross-check to see if this could potentially even be the same Ernest Williams. Okay. This is how difficult it is when people switch up names and switch up numbers and birth dates and switch. It. It's just a lot. So anyway. So as I was minding my business, which I always do, because I'm just trying to make sure that I send you guys sufficient information and that it's correct information. I was looking on, you know, because he because Ernesto is a has a prior. He's a repeat offender. There are a lot of cases that you see, right? So we went over this on one of the other videos where they were saying he's a repeat offender. So even if she didn't know about his past, she was going to know because this stuff is attached because they always, it enhances your sentencing and it, it plays into your sentencing when you have a past like this. So as you see in the last slot, slot eight, he did some time for bank fraud in 2000. I think it was 2005. They have 2008. I think that was when he was discharged from his prison sentence. And he served it in, it said federal, and it was in Kentucky. So I was looking around and I was able to find, first I found a complaint that showed that there is a lady, and I didn't put her name out here. I kept it, you know, I wouldn't be wanting to brag if you know. But. So I didn't, I did cross her name out because I don't know how much she really wants to um, have her information out there like that. But nevertheless, there is a case where there was a separation agreement. Let me show that real quick. Y'all bear with me. It's 930 of you guys. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you have not done so already. Um, so there was a separation agreement, right, that was filed in 2005. However, wait a minute. Let me show you this separation agreement. I'm not in order. So there is a separation agreement that was in 2005. So this is a separation agreement. You see it says 2005. No, this has the wrong one on it. Hold on. Hold on. One second. 
See, this is what happened when you're trying to produce your own shows. I got to step my game up. S B. Okay, so this is a separation agreement that was filed in the family division in 2005. Okay, you see he spells it E-R-N-E-S-T Williams, okay? But then what happened was when I looked down the docket, I saw that that case ended up being dismissed. So that's what I just showed you guys before. So in 2007, because of the lack of progress, it says November 18th of 2005, this was filed. After reviewing the file, it appears the service on the defendant has never been perfected. So therefore, they dismissed the case without prejudice because she never served the other party. So basically, it's kind of like it was filed, but nothing happened because it was never served. So then... I go further down the docket and I see a complaint that was filed in, let me see, no, that's this indictment. Hold on. I see that Ernesto filed it actually filed a complaint for divorce. And let me see. Hold on, guys. I know y'all like this girl. <laughs> Hold it, hold it. I got to make sure I'm not putting folks business like because a lot of these complaints have um, they got kids information on them. So I just want to make sure that I don't have that. So you guys talk some of yourself while I get this, while I get, get this together. Let's see. Hold on, guys. Trying to find his complaint. Okay, wait a Here it is. All right. Hold on. I just got to make sure no names are on here. All right, now we cooking with grease. All right. So here's a petition of divorce that was filed and it has the petitioner wants the dissolution of marriage. This is a petition to dissolve the marriage of the petitioner and it has him as the husband. And it basically says the respondent has been a resident of Georgia for more than six months, 
But the petitioner is presently incarcerated in a federal medical center at Lexington, Kentucky, serving a sentence imprisonment. And so I was like, oh, okay. So then it mentions on seven, the petitioner and respondent agreed to be legally separated in April of 2005. The marriage is irretrievably broken. There was a minor child and that it is in the best interest of the child for the petitioner and respondent to have shared parental responsibility. However, it is further in the best interest of the child for the respondent to have sole custodial custody. So he wasn't fighting over custody or anything. The husband has personal knowledge that the respondent has filed for personal bankruptcy protection and therefore there's no joint marital assets to resolve. Likewise, there are no liabilities. He'll provide appropriate child support. So this is the petition essentially that was filed in 2007 for divorce. So there were also a few hearings that took place after this was filed. There were a couple of hearings. And, but this is what, this is what got me. So there were hearings. So when you go through the divorce process, you have to do what's called, you put it on the record. So you go to court and you say, for those of you that have not gone through a divorce or haven't witnessed how the procedure and processes works, even if you consent, because it sounds like this would be consensual if somebody wanted to have a separate maintenance and somebody wanted to have a divorce, clearly they didn't want to be together. So what happens is you go to court and then the judge says, um, basically ask them a bunch of questions to make sure that they really want the divorce. And they say, you know, the marriage is irretrievably bro broken. Ours is the bond of matrimony have been destroyed. And there's no way that, that you can basically come back together. So then they go by and they ask you all these questions and ask you, you know, about the kids and blah, 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 blah. And do you really want it to happen? But even though you put it on the record, you have to have an order of divorce. So you submit the order to the court of what your stipulations are. If you got to talk about splitting debt, splitting property, um, there's usually divisions for children, like the, the friend of the court, which you call child support. Um, they have different, you know, divisions for the kids and whether you guys agree that you're not going to use their assistance to collect child support, you know, all of that stuff has to go into a document. It goes into an order. So you have to submit this document to the court. So I did see where a complaint was filed. I also see that a hearing took place. But then in 2014, this is what piqued, piqued my interest where I was like, wait, what? So in 2014, it said, the above action for divorce was filed July 31st of 2007 on January 2nd, 2008, an order transfer and the judge was entered. Since that date, there have been no orders entered or filed in the case. Furthermore, there has been no dismissal filed in the case. Any action or other proceeding in any of the courts of this state in which no written order is taken for five years shall automatically stand dismissed with costs to be taxed against the party plaintiff. More than five years have passed and there has been no order taken in this case. The dismissal is not an adjudication on the merits of the case. So they're dismissing the case, but it really didn't resolve the case because it wasn't adjudication on the merits. So somehow, and this, this was signed June 28th of 2014. So somehow, according to this, if this is the same Ernest Williams, Somehow, it looks like he may have filed. They may have went because he was pro se because he was in prison. So you went and you filed. And then perhaps the order was not ever submitted, according to this. And so what that would mean is that it never really, you never completed the process. So that's what it looks like, according to this document, again. I'm just, I don't know none of these people. So I'm putting my disclaimer out here. I don't know none of these people. It could be that perhaps they filed in another county. Uh, they went to another, somebody moved to another state and decided to file then. But as of two, June of 2014, as it, as it pertains to this specific divorce that was filed, the court dismissed this action for non-movement. Now, he was married in January of 2015. Now, just hypothetically, this is just hypothetically, I'm just saying, I'm not saying yay or nay. I'm just looking at the documents. If hypothetically he still was married to this person, I don't know, allegedly 
there's supposed to be somebody else he was married to. I don't know. I wasn't able to find any information on that. But let's just assume that he was married. If he was married, then it's really easier on her because she can just now, she, you don't even have to pay for a lawyer like that. You can just get your, your, your uh, marriage annulled which means it never was because it would be considered quote fraud because if you were already a married person can't get married you know if that's what it is if that's not what it is of course she would still have to go through the divorce process maybe she requested and she saw he had divorce documents and they was from another county or something but as it pertains to this specific case it did not end with the proper um order for divorce Callie said, I know someone who married two different people simply by changing his name. Yeah, I have a friend whose father had a whole family in Florida. And their their last name was made up and everything. Um, and so they found out, her mom find, found out about it, had two kids by him and everything. And he was a truck driver. So, you know, they travel a lot. And so he would go down there and see the family. And then, um, you know, they got it and all. And it never was. So that's what I had now from my understanding talking to um Chronicle Speaks, it was another situation she was talking about. Um, that she was trying to verify. She did acknowledge she didn't verify it, you know, she wasn't able to verify. And I'm just saying, this is the document. Take it as you will. <laughs> Take it as you will. But um He said, that's what I was thinking is her saving. It could be. She, I mean, I would definitely look into it. That's all I'm saying. If I was the lawyer, I would definitely say, let me make sure that anybody, he was change up names, switch up letters, because this was filed, this was E-R-N-E-S-T, but a lot of the recent cases are E-A-R-N-E-S-T that he has. So there's a lot of flip-flopping between E-A and E-R. So I would look and see if, you know, if it, these, this marriage was dissolved or if he was allegedly married before her and if that was dissolved. I don't know. So that's something obviously to look into just to see. And if he is married, I mean, it is what it is. You just go through the proper vehicles if you want to get a divorce. But for, for but if if he never did get a divorce and this was like the way it looks like it was dismissed from the court and all of that and there really was no finality to it even though he may have thought they may have thought it was finality to it because when you put it on the record that's not the end of it you do like here we got to do a record of divorce and file it and everything so i'm assuming you do that in other states as well but um, if, if that's what it is, then you, you get that joint, you get that baby and all, man. It's probably a, a nice little application for five dollars or something you can um get from the court and go ahead and file it. Um, I don't know. Every state does not have common law marriage, so I'm not familiar with that. We don't have that where I am, so. But. Yeah, I'm sure she will. I hope she does because, but see, that was kind of my point. I know you guys are like, oh, you really digging to help to say, <laughs> to, to give her an excuse. It's a lot. Like I, I see her going by what he said, but there are things, like I said, that show different name spellings and then it's in different counties and it's in different this and different that. So if you're not really that person to just investigate and you want to believe what somebody say i can i guess i could see you getting a you know a little bamboozled and hoodwinked because do we know the last time she spoke to him on the phone see that's kind of tricky because she says she hadn't talked to him in a substantial amount of time um i don't believe there's any jail calls past june perhaps, maybe May or June. But our, uh, Nesto did mention that there are iPads that they have in the sales. So nobody really knows, like, are you talking to them on the iPad? So 
<laughs> oh, that's a good, that'll be interesting. That'll be interesting. Yeah, it's messy. And I was literally just trying to figure out the bank, the, the bank robbery situation, the alleged bank fraud, rather, the bank fraud situation. And I was looking it up and I came across that like, hmm. So that was when he went to Kentucky. This is the same name. You know, it was th that's literally how you have to go through all of these layers to figure out figure out what's going on. What? That's he said that person on the separations listed as co-owner of the shop. But when you Google that name of business, a picture of Shirley and Ernesto pops up. Oh, yeah, I had a whole nother audio. I don't know why this is playing so distorted, so I'm not going to make your ears bleed with it. But I had a whole nother audio and I have to take it in segments. Cause I do, I listen to jail calls in my real everyday profession, but, um, you feel like when you listen to a lot of this stuff, you lose a couple of brain cells. Like seriously, I was playing it. I was like, Oh my God. Wow. What, what you mean? What you mean by that? What? Huh? Yeah. 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 So it's just the same. It's the lack of, um, conversation and you can tell like on the audio that I played it's very interesting to me because when she told him you need to get your stuff together basically and make sure all your stuff is clear so we not having this in and out of jail situation if you got warrants get your stuff together she had to come behind him she could tell in his voice that he felt some kind of way that she said that to him so she responded and was like do you get what I'm saying is that fair because it appeared it probably there probably have been times of course i'm not in their home but there probably have been times of which she um she's tried to tell him things and he's made it seem like you talking to me like i'm a kid or something because <laughs> so. And he said, child, this is too messy. I'm just trying to figure out how you say about all these women being as <laughs> Somebody like it. You like it, I love it. I guess. In his case, they split in social security. Um, I heard that. Um I heard that uh in the um who was I? Oh, in the jail call with with the the alleged mistress, she was saying they had the wrong social security number or something. So I I did see two different documents on something else where there were switch arounds in the numbers of the last four that were on it. Because you know they just show the last four, and there were some switch arounds. So yeah. Terrell said she would still be with him if those calls were not put out to the public. She was defending him. Is it true that he also scammed Charleston White out of millions? CW said it about five months ago, but he's a troll. He's actually said that on a couple of platforms where he's made allegations that he claims, Charleston White claims that um, on a couple of platforms he went on, that somehow but he's alleged like an elaborate scheme like taking his marriage license and opening getting lines of credit and it's not like he's he's alleging a lot of things and he said he he went down and talked to roswell at one of the interviews he did he said he went down to roswell and he's considered one of the victims i guess in that case according to him
Isn't this mistress around lawyers and stuff? Yeah, she's in the legal field somehow. I don't know if she's a secretary or a paralegal. And allegedly the co-defendant, part of her charges was impersonating a lawyer. If you go on to her, her charges over in Fulton County. So yeah, it's a mess, guys. This is a whole entire mess. But so that's what I could come up with on the marriage thing. Again, allegedly he was married before this person. I, I'm without any information on who that person is. So I wish for him they make some even more, hopefully make her healing easier. Yeah. And, and you know what? She believed in him. It's real obvious that she wanted to believe in what he was saying. And I was saying that before, like, it's your husband. I can see you um, trying to support him. And especially with if you guys were here for the beginning of the live, he did have a couple of cases that were reported in 2015, the year they got married, like within five months. But those were no lay pros, so they were dismissed by the prosecutor. So perhaps because those, I don't know if there was a deal, you know, cut out. I don't know any of the logistics behind it, but let's just assume the prosecutor just chose to dismiss it as his wife. Perhaps he was like, she, you know, she believed, okay, because of his past, they keep accusing him of stuff. So maybe that's what she believes, but. So you say that was the sign. I get it. I get it. Thank you. Yes. Make sure you guys please hit that like button. She's a paralegal. Okay. What did he mean when he said he would counter sue because he wasn't informed about his warrants? I, that's a good question. That's a good question. But it sounds like he just says things to hold because I have another audio where his mistress, his alleged mistress, is more in the loop about a lot of stuff that has to do with his current cases. Um, it's a 30 minute take two, so I'll come back on another live and maybe talk about it. But she's more in the loop. Like literally on this phone call, she's calling the court. She's alleging she talked to somebody, I think, at the at the um his attorney's office. Just but she was asking the questions. That was that's what was tripping me out. I'm like, but she was really making sure she knew what was going on. So the she knows what she, she's getting into because she knows how it is. Now she I think she believes them. She believes that they're just fishing, like like Shirley said, believe they're just trying to find stuff. I think she believes the same thing, but she's more in the know because it's like it's almost like he was getting hit with so many charges he couldn't really keep up and so he needed her to try to help him sort out his own charges <laughs> like that's where it got in that uh, that audio you said they all be knowing what they get into oh lord <laughs> thank you so much i appreciate it that is so kind of you but anyway, guys, I'm about to jump on off of here so I can. I hope you guys enjoyed today's live. And and just for you guys to know, this live was based on questions of people that DM'd me. So if you have anything you want to talk about, make sure you email me. My information is in the description section. Or you can DM me. It's pam.esq on Instagram. Go follow your girl. And you can DM me with whatever, any information. If you are. The ex-wife, almost ex-wife, or any of that, you can call me too. And everybody is open to tell me if I am report. I want to make sure that my reporting is accurate. You see, that's why I come with documents. If there is something else where you guys have this whole divorce or that ain't you, you guys can let me know. But oh, one thing I wanted to say before I got off of here. There was there were also information that was out there in the chat about um Ernesto being caught with a GUN. Put a one in the chat if you've heard that Ernesto was somehow he caught a case with a GUN. I don't know if that's something that was um I've heard that in a couple of somebody asked me about that in the comments. So that's another thing that I wanted to make sure that I 
discussed. Okay, so everyone heard that. From what I'm looking at, I don't think that is the same earnest. And the reason why I say that is, again, there was an indictment that came down on that case. And in that indictment, um, it had, let me see, it had who the, because you know, I'm going to tell, I'm going I'm to be fair on all sides with it. But it had the birth date. I don't know if I can pull it up. But they had the birth date of like 2003. So I don't think, based on that, I don't think that is the same, the same Ernesto. That's what I'm saying about it being difficult because the way the name is and how it's so many different spellings and all of that. I think I pulled up that case as well because i believe let me make sure we we're on the same page on the case that we're referring to i got so many cases for it okay let me pull that case up right quick make sure y'all hit that like button before you get up out of here please thank you So this was the case that I kept seeing that people were going around saying it was his. Let me know if this is the same case that you guys heard because we about to dispel this now if this is the case that everyone saw that they were talking about. Thank you so much, too, for the cash apps, guys. I really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Kim, Bridget, and Tyra. Thank you. You know what? <laughs> so this was the case that I, that from my understanding was the one because it had possession of the, and it had his name on it. And so as I was doing my due diligence, I looked up the bottom of it and it had a birth date of 2003. Clearly he ain't had no birthday of 2003. So I don't think it's the same person. So that's one of the reasons why I never really reported on that charge because clearly he was born in 1965. So, <clears throat> so that's that. Angel said, how do you become a member? If one of my mods could put the information, put the information there for me. Still, I got another membership. Yes, thank you so much, KB Mommy. I appreciate your membership jenny jenny my and jeezy um that is actually true i have those documents as well uh so perhaps <laughs> perhaps tomorrow let me show you let me show you i'm not joking i'm not joking let's see that is actually true, even though it's on the blogs. I posted it in the um on my wall an article, but I do have hopefully you can see. Oh, let me see. Turn my camera my light this way. This is part of their divorce complaint for divorce and other relief. So, yes, he has filed a divorce in this case. Perhaps that will be something that we end up going through. It'll be interesting to see how she responds to this. Um, so right now we just have his complaint. It's very interesting, the, the timing of it, because she was just praising him on her Instagram. And that's why I was really, really shocked when I saw it. I'm like, what? Wait, what? That's why I was like, I had to post it. Like, what? <laughs> what is happening here? You know what? I'm not doing this with you. I am not. <laughs> Thank you, Tessie. Thank you. I'm not doing this with you guys. <laughs> All right, y'all. That sounds like it might be a nice, a nice show. We might go over the um Jeezy situation sometime this weekend, but 
for now. Plans on being here for about an hour to answer all of your questions on what I was able to find. That was a lot of research that I had to do to get the information that I brought to you guys. Because again, like I said, with those name changes, it's like, E, how do you spell this name? So then I got it like, okay, you were here. Let me look up your inmate number, see if he got the same birthday. Like I was doing a whole lot of cross-referencing. Okay. So if if it's the wrong person, it's not because I didn't try diligently to make sure. Because I don't know any of these people. So. <laughs> oh, Ruby said the genie cheats. Ah. What? Yes, she sure was. See, y'all going to get me off on this tangent with them. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Thank you guys so much for coming in and watching your girl. Make sure you hit the like on the way out. Make sure you like. And you all have a good Friday. Make sure y'all read the disclaimer below because uh, I don't want nobody coming after me. <laughs> okay.